Hi, welcome back to the Inkvent calendar by Diamine, the red edition for 2021, and let's check the day to ink in the door or the window number two. So let's try to open this and see what we have here. And this color is called garland and it is a shimmer and sheen ink and by the the bottle it seems to be a, a green one so I'm quite interested in seeing this so if you want to see the rest of the review and to see how the ink behaves please stay there and I'll be back just in a moment to show you the properties of this ink. So let's take a look how this shimmer and sheen ink will perform. Let's take three droplets of ink. One, two, three. Let's put these aside, these two, and let's see how these will spread. We will only be able to see how it actually looks after it uh, dries a little bit more. So this is quite a thick uh, swatch, but I kind of like to do them like, like this. This will not be very uh, how can I say? This is not an accurate reflect, an, an, an accurate, an accurate um, reflection of what the ink is like, but um, or, or what the ink will look like with a pen. But this is just to have a swatch to see the ink in its best, and then we will see. Uh, the paper, the, the writing sample that will tell us more how the ink will actually behave during real writing. But this may be fun just to see how it will go. We can see that there will be parts with very heavy, um, with ink very heavily applied. I may just try to spread it a little bit more and I think we can already see that there are parts there with some blue sheen over the green, uh, some blue glitter uh, shimmer over the green, kind of a cold green color and there may be some kind of purplish sheen, but that's what we'll see next after these very heavily saturated swatch is dry. So, stay tuned. So, finally, here I have the ink and let me show you the, the bottle that I showed you before. It is Shimmer and Sheen and you can see it really has some shimmer. Well, this effect is just so amazing. Whoa. Okay, sorry about this, but I think it is amazing to see the, the sheen moving. Okay, enough. Now it went somewhere else. Uh, this is the ink garland. And let's see how this ink looks like on paper. The swatch is dry and here it is. So what, how can we uh, describe this color? This color is kind of uh, cool, somehow bluish green with a red sheen that is very well visible, kind of a red magenta sheen and an amazing amount of shimmer 
in blue. I want to compare this ink with the ink that you saw uh, on the 2019 uh, calendar. So I have three inks to which I want to compare them. So this is the garland for day two of 2021. And we have here the day 14 Jack Frost, which is a color that also has a red sheen. Let me pick this one up. Also has red sheen and I would say it has a very similar shimmer. And also the Happy Holidays with also red sheen. And I would say it's more kind of a greenish shimmer, so it is a little different. Um, so I would say that the garland is very... I'm not, I'm not sure that what I'm saying is really a correct thing to say, but I would say that the garland is the same... has the same characteristics as the Jack Frost, but green instead of blue. The most similar color to Garland in the 2019 calendar would be this one, the Holly, because the Holly also had the same red sheen, but no shimmer, and the this darker green is kind of similar, but in a warmer tone. Now, to compare these with other inks in my collection. I have here Monte Grappa Green, which is quite close when you look at the these kind of mid-tones, but this one is warmer. I also have here Pelican Edelstein Aventurine, which is clearly a warm green. Not com it, Of course it looks warm next to the Monte Grappa, but the Monte Grappa looks warm next to the uh, Garland. And if I had to choose, I would say the most similar ink is this, the darker shades of green, of the Parker Quink green, but the more modern version, not the vintage one that I showed you before here on the channel. About the chromatography of this ink, it is here, so you can see that you have a, a line, very faint line there, which maybe it's not very visible because this paper is very rough, but I would say this may be the shimmer there, this line, because it's not really pigment, and then all clear, no water resistance at all, and it goes to the top with blue and green. Very simple chromatography of this ink. Now, let's see the pens that I chose for this review. And I chose two pens, which is kind of fun because at the end they don't have much difference in line width, but they have difference in ink flow, and that may be fun. I brought here the Kaigalu 356 in green. It's called green, but it is actually more kind of blue. It is an interesting pen. Nice shape with a very good Kaigalu nib, as usual, with the kangaroo there. So a Chinese pen, and also the Schneider base and the Schneider base it's a very inexpensive pen made in Germany and this one has a broad nib and there you can see I would say this pen looks like with this flat surface there it reminds me of a mix between the Lamy Safari and the Rotring Core because of the shape of the section so these are the pens that I'm going to compare. Now let's see the writing samples. We will start, as usual, with 
the moleskin paper. Moleskin paper is not white, it is a off-white color. And here you can see this is written with the Kaigalu, and there it is written with the Schneider. You can see there is no much line difference, as I told you, with, between the fine and the broad on the other pen. But what you can see is that the ink flow is much heavier on the Kaigalu than on the base. So, on the Kaigalu you see a much darker tone, very hard to see the, the sheen, but you can see a little bit some, in some places. And the shimmer is also that hard to, to see here in the moleskin paper. You can see more shading with the base than with the Kaigalu. And that's because the, it puts lots of ink. There is feathering with the Kaigalu because of the amount of the ink, I would say. And almost no feathering with the Schneider base. And when we look in the other side of the... Let's just see. Here you can see some shimmer in this swatch that I made with the Kaigalu. So, on the other side of the page we have written with the Kaigalu, here was written with Schneider and all this is written with Schneider. So, there is some bleed through in both pens but much less with the Schneider and some feathering as I showed you on the other side. Now we go to the Oxford Optic Paper, which is quite good paper, and here you can see some differences. With the Kaigalu, because it puts more ink, the ink seems much darker, and it's more visible here. And when you um, orientate the, the page to the light, you can see the shimmer, and you can see the shim. So, uh, there is really some sheen, and the sheen is very more, very much visible with the Kaigalu. With the Schneider base, the ink seems to shade, but not with lots of sheen, but you can see the shimmer. So, the, the, the ink looks a little bit different, because it has more shimmer here and more sheen. It is a mix of green in the base, the red and the blue all very uh, concentrated. Here with the Schneider base that starts here, it's very easy to, to understand, so it's kind of more blackish, bluish. Here you don't have that thing. You just have a shading ink with a little bit of sheen, with a little bit, look here at this A, with a little bit of uh, shimmer but really uh, an open, let's call it like that, an open green. With the navigator, ah, let me just show you there, the swatch, you can see everything, the color, the sheen and the shimmer. When we go, uh, and sorry, when we go to check the other side of the page with Oxford paper, no bleed through because of the Oxford paper is really nice. Then we go to Navigator, Copy Paper. And when you put this to light, you don't see any sheen at all, but you can see the shimmer. And you can go around, look for the sheen, and I can't see it in this copy paper. Because it's maybe too absorbent, you can see some shimmer at the surface, but no sheen because the ink was absorbed instead of staying on the surface of the paper. Here on the other side of the paper, yes, lots of bleed through. However, very, very, very mild feathering. While here on the moleskin paper, you can see the feathering is much higher and the ink goes through the paper fibers. So now let's just see the Rhodia paper. And the Rhodia paper was also the paper where I made this 
swatch. So, the Rodia paper shows here the Diamine, Diamine Infant Calendar 2021, number 2, Garland. And let's see the characteristics that we can take out of it. Rhodia paper, sheen, shimmer, all there is in the ink you can see there. Let's compare this with the Oxford paper and they are very comparable. Now here you can see the water resistance test. I made these lines and then I dropped a few drops of water. I waited for a long time and then I just picked up the excess water there and you can see that the ink really disappears and you don't even see anymore the original line or you see it very very faint. It won't be possible to read. So what it's this, no water resistance. We could guess that from the uh, chromatography. Now, I went for this test of uh, smearing the ink. I just did this because here on this final paper I only do it with one, one pen. I did this with the Kaigalu, as it's written there. And you can see it's crazy. This keeps wet for a very, very, very long time. So, above 60 seconds, one minute after ending writing, it's not a puddle of ink anymore, but it still smears. And I went until one minute and a half, and still a little smear that. There. Uh, smear is quite common on inks with sheen, they seem to need to be more concentrated there to, to give that uh, odd reflection. So I think that's the explanation. Too much sheen forces the, the ink to have uh, this, this kind of slower drying time. Now, sorry, I was just adju uh, adjusting here the light. I'm not sure if this is better. And so let's just finish this review with the Kaigalu saying the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. This nib may have a little baby's button, that's why it, it sometimes skips, but not very badly. And now let's see the little puddles of ink that are on the paper. I'm not sure if you can see. It is still very wet, even the O on the dog is really, really wet. So this ink looks kind of uh, an almost black something. And now let's go for the Schneider base, which has this Lamy style nib. And write the same thing. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog that skipping was me rotating the nib. And let's just compare. I think it's already visible. This looks like a very dark purplish black. And the other one looks like green. You can see the focus. You can see there is some sheen and shimmer in both inks. But I think I would say this ink will look, it's not a matter of looking better. Uh, the ink has all these components, I would say. When we're writing with such a wet pen as the Kaigalu, you'll be here, like here in the middle. So what is that? It's just a very dark with everything going on. When you look at the writing sample with the broad nib of the Schneider, uh, it 
it really puts down less ink and here you can see the shading, the sheen and you can see the, the shimmer also less intense than in that one but there you can see all the different characteristics of the ink which is not visible in such a wet pen as this one so i hope this ink review was interesting and i hope to meet you here again tomorrow for day number three of this inkvent calendar bye